Well, coming up on today's show, Tesla drive forward with battery development. The car battery pioneer that wants to reduce the amount of cobalt being used, and three massive reasons to be cheerful today about EVs. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It is Wednesday, the fourteenth of November, twenty eighteen, and it's Martin Lee here. And I've been through every EV story I can find today, so you don't have to. Thank you very much to our friends at myev.com. Always worth the mention because I'm sure there's somebody listening to the podcast today who hasn't yet been to myev.com. You know, it's about buying and selling and learning about used EVs. Nice uh, nice new ones are what we'd all like to sit in our driveway, but when those practicalities hit in, sometimes you've got to sell a car and sometimes buy a car. And what I did a couple of months ago was buy a used EV. Perfect place to go, myev.com, if you would like to find out more. Thank you very much as well to... Not one, uh, not two, but three new patrons of the podcast in one day. It's funny how it goes sometimes. And then three new patrons come along at once. Well, first of all, thank you very much to new producer of the show, Philip Stuger. Or Stuger. Uh, Philip, if I've said your name wrong, please correct me. Hello as well to Maz. Maz Shah is a new executive producer of this podcast. And Maz, I'm looking forward to crediting you every single week on the Saturday show. And hello to Don McC- Callister. Now, there'll be people listening to this podcast who know who Don is and thinking, that's very cool. Uh, and I completely agree with you, by the way. So thank you very much, Don. No stranger to making content himself. Don McAllister is a new executive producer of the podcast. Thank you, sir. So look out for your weekend bonus shows that we make for exec producers and above. Thank you very much to everybody, in fact, on Patreon who helps make the show. Allow me to do things like today when in somewhere called Victoria in in London. It's uh, it's kind of part of the city, but I thought I'd explain where I went. So I went there today to go meet an energy company. Well, they're a charging company, but they've got some really big ambitions. They're doing amazing things already, but the things on the cards are fascinating. They're called Engini, and I'm going to tell you all about it on Saturday. So I spent some time at their offices there today, talking to their business development director and meeting the rest of the team as well. Uh, you can hear the full thing on Saturday, but it's just one example of the support that you give this podcast it means that I can go and do things like like that, and then bring you insights and hopefully a bit of entertainment along the way as well about where this whole sustainable transport journey takes us. I think you're going to love the interview on Saturday. That uh, I just, Give me a couple of days to edit it and it'll be ready for Saturday, but that's a real fascinating one, actually. Let me kick off with three reasons to be cheerful today. Three really quick headlines. I uh, didn't want to give you the whole story of each of these because they're kind of self-explanatory, but I wanted to include them, so I thought we'd start with three bullet points. Firstly, Formula E comes to the BBC. Uh, The BBC is going to show coverage of every ABB Formula E championship race from December. So no commercials and a full broadcast package, and you can catch that on the red button as well, streaming. Maybe you get this service in your country that you're listening around the world. I'm delighted that they've got this long-term vision, long-term strategy. Let's go with a channel and a a broadcaster that can get it out to as many people as possible because they're still in the growth phase. They're not where Formula One is, of course. Uh, They are still growing very quickly. So I think it's amazing news. Second bit of good news, in China, G-A-C-N-E are unveiling their all-new full battery electric vehicle. It's a coupe, and it looks nice. It's got a giant range of 600 kilometres. Wow, range of EVs just keeps going up and up. And finally, 10% of all new vehicles purchased in California are actually electric vehicles now. And of course, you know what starts in certain places, China, California, you know it starts somewhere. Everything's got to start somewhere, but then it spreads, doesn't it? And then we get all the all the benefits of the early learning that's been done. So we're really looking forward to uh, that increasing. And then around the world, uh, places like Norway influencing countries like maybe, maybe where you live in. By the way, I've mentioned California, and I haven't mentioned it on the podcast, by the way. I can see from the download stats we have so many listeners in California. And just to say that all of our thoughts are with you with the events and the wildfires that are happening there. For If you know anyone that's affected, our thoughts are with you. And, of course, with those affected and the first responders. And we're watching reports from even halfway around the world here of people who haven't slept for three, four days, not had a proper meal just because they're they're working and working and working. So a shout out to you, first responders, and I'm sure everyone is grateful for what you do. And when this is all under control, you, you deserve your Thanksgiving turkey and your Christmas break. 
Well, a story to kick us off that comes via Phil Roberts, who is the premium partner of this podcast uh, from Electric Future. And Phil tweeted me earlier today to put me onto this story, and so it comes right top of the podcast today. A quick history of batteries in Teslas then, cells in Teslas actually. Uh, first up was the cylindrical cells called the 18650s. 18 millimetres by 65 millimetres. I'm not sure where the zero comes from, but anyway, we call them 18650s. They should be called 1865s. They're lithium-ion batteries, same same shape as a AA battery, but chunkier and bigger. Then Tesla and Panasonic developed the new size. They've moved on to the 2170s for the Model 3. Now, the cells are larger and more energy-dense, and that still seems very new to me, by the way. The 2170 cells... Uh, seemed like only five minutes ago, but of course it was a long time ago now. Uh, these are even larger and even more energy dense. New automation is coming to the Nevada Gigafactory, and that's going to increase production. But today there's news on CNBC, and they had some time with the president of automotive, Tesla, Jerome Guillen. And I actually saw this because Elon Musk had tweeted some video out today, so I'm guessing he's happy with the content. Uh, Jerome was commenting on the design of the cell, saying we're improving the design of the cell all the time. It's not frozen, it evolves. He has a nice roadmap, he says, of technology improvements. In fact, let me play you a clip of him today talking on CNBC, talking about uh, when asked about if they are finding ways to make things better all the time. Actually quite a lot. Uh, There are different ways we can do that. Uh, We're going to increase the production by adding some um, additional manufacturing lines with our colleagues from Panasonic. So we're going to get some greater economies of scales. The designs of the lines themselves, the production lines for the cells, is becoming better. We find efficiency here and there uh, to increase the throughput and increase yield. The yield is increasing very nicely. And thirdly, we're improving the design of the cell. The the design of the cell is not uh, frozen. It evolves, and we have a very nice roadmap of technology improvements for the coming years. Well, there's a target of $100 per kilowatt hour cell level, which Elon has previously said at the shareholders meeting that Tesla Panasonic it will be there at the end of the year. Next target, of course, is $100 per kilowatt hour at pack level when you add all those ancillaries and packaging around them. Moving on, and a scientist turned entrepreneur uh, behind the battery technology adopted by chemical giants like BASF and Johnson Matthey is back with another one of his inventions, one that he claims will boost electric vehicle performance for many years to come. According to Bloomberg, Canon Sahin is 77, and he's been working for many years on battery technology. He says his latest innovation reduces the need for cobalt. It's a key battery material, and it's going to be reduced to only the most critical areas in order to lower costs. Well, Sahin's new invention called GEMX can be used in a number of types of nickel-based power packs and has been granted patents so far in the US, the European Union, China and Japan. Uh, The technique could lower cobalt content to 4% of battery cathodes from... 20% in some cases, 10% in others with the more recent developments uh, of the new chemistries that aren't really being used on scale. In fact, I think in any uh, EVs, that's kind of a 2019 thing that's coming. So this is probably another couple of years down the roadmap, and that's fantastic news. Well, Volkswagen have nominated a fourth battery supplier with the South Korean battery cell manufacturer SKI, that's SK Innovation. The Volkswagen Group has named another supplier for EVs based on their MEB platform, the Modular Electric Toolkit. I know what you're thinking, MET isn't MEB. Well, MEB is for that in German. SKI is going to supply the batteries for North America and a share of the batteries for the production of the Volkswagen Group's full electric vehicles here in Europe. Within the framework of what Volkswagen is calling Roadmap E, it's their plan to have 50 five zero, 50 full electric models on the roads by 2025 in the next six or seven years. The Group, that's not just Volkswagen car, by the way, uh, the brand, but the group is going to have 50 full electrics on the market. They need battery capacity to fulfill that strategy of 150 gigawatt hours every single year 
just for their own cars. Well, the Volkswagen Group has taken LG Chem, Samsung and SKI on board as strategic partners for Europe. The partners are going to safeguard battery supplies from next year when production does start of the ID range. In addition, SKI is going to cover the group's demand for North America. And finally, CATL is another cell maker. They are their strategic partner for China and will supply batteries for the group's own electric fleet there from 2019. There's great news today for Tesla Model 3 reservation holders and enthusiasts here in Europe. Tesla is officially displaying the Model 3 across European countries starting today. Places like Amsterdam and the Netherlands I've seen are getting one. Uh, You can sign up for the Model 3 events by going to the Tesla website and looking for events near your location. According to Exauto World, the Model 3 reservation holders, if you have put your money down as a reservation holder, check your emails because there should be an email waiting in your inbox. Several European reservation holders are reporting they've received an invite to a meetup somewhere near them. I've seen this on Twitter. I've seen this on Reddit, I've seen it on the forums today. Enthusiasts can also sign up to apply to go along and have the model, th- have a look at the Model Three. And although you can experience it firsthand, uh, they're not yet offering test drives for the Model Three. So far, uh, we've had reports from Belgium, Sweden, France, Italy, Norway, and more. Here's the big question I have, though: Will the European cars have the CCS combo charging plug? Of course, the Tesla plug is the same; it's interchangeable with the Type Two Menekes that you're used to. But will it have the two extra bits on the bottom for DC fast charging to make it a CCS combo plug? I guess we'll find out. If these aren't US spec cars coming to Europe, if these are European spec cars that they're testing, and we've seen those VIN registrations coming through now for a few weeks, well, I get somebody will open the flap and take a picture and put it on the internet. <laughs> it would be, be amazing if there were some degree of fast AC charging and uh, CCS combo. I mean, it, it would be ultimate, wouldn't it, for any Tesla Model 3 owner here in Europe, where CCS has been the preferred way of DC fast charging. Well, talking of charging, charging point supplier Swarco Evolts has launched a new pan-European network for its own Evolt charging points, as well as third-party charging stations. According to Fleet World, it's called the Swarco eConnect, and the network can be accessed using an app on your phone or an RFID access card. You can purchase one for £10. No connection fees for this, and you can use charge points across their network. The app provides details of the location and live status, and you can view that online and on the app. A journey planner will give drivers the chance to plan ahead as well. It's interesting, last two stories today, both vehicles which are being electrified and really interesting, pretty niche use cases for electric power. First up, BBC News is testing the world's first electric outside broadcast vehicle. Now, when I first started working in the media, which was 1994, we had these huge, big diesel trucks that we would take out to outside broadcasts. And then kind of late 90s, uh, we moved on to our next generation truck, but they still had massive masts that you would, you know, pump up and But these days, the outside broadcast vehicles are so much less than that technology and uh, data over IP. So IP connections have changed the world, really, of us broadcasting on location. News news gathering operations are now using the electric OB van for simple live outside broadcasts only in London like outside court, big court cases and things like that. Uh, They're purchasing more 100% renewable energy as well all the time at the BBC for its major sites. Uh, And so therefore, green energy, green electric vehicles in a big city like London, it makes so much sense. The final story today, uh, we've talked about this before, but it's a little update on the podcast for you. Vehicle and equipment manufacturers aren't slowing down when it comes to finding new ways to use batteries. A compact excavator is the latest one to ditch diesel, according to geek.com. Power for the excavator is supplied by an array of battery models made by Cummins. Yes, though, of diesel. Those of diesel fame. They're getting into the battery business. And an array of 4.4 kilowatt hour modules stacked in what you would probably call a backhoe. We would call it a digger but you may call it a backhoe. Uh, the excavator packs eight of these modules stacked in total. You can run an, eight, an entire eight-hour shift of the backhoe with this. Three hours to fully recharge it. As for the companies that purchase the excavator, they're going to get reduced maintenance that comes with using electrons to power whatever you're powering. And Hyundai's customers have already expressed an interest in more electrified equipment, not just the cost savings that construction firms want to have for the switch but also that lower noise as well 
Thank you so much to everybody that's joining in with the question of the week this week. It seems to be a really popular one. It's got your imaginations running wild. Here's the question this week. I'd love you to send me an email or a comment about, and we'll read out your answers on Sunday when we read them out and set a new question every week. Thanks to myev.com for setting the question of the week. So in your opinion, either present, either on the market now or coming soon which ev are you most excited about and why which ev are you most excited about and tell me why well thank you very much to the 119 patrons of the podcast that shot up overnight if you would like to have your name added to the list i'd love to be reading out your name on the podcast go to patreon.com slash ev news daily but no pressure i'll make it either way uh this show will always be here waiting for you there's 295 of them online waiting for you from the places you get podcasts from and you're welcome to download any of them if you see something in the subject title or the show notes which piques your interest and if you want to come and say hello on my blog and leave a comment that way it's evnewsdaily.com if you do hit subscribe on whatever platform you get this on it means you get it first and free and of course automatically catch up on the socials on facebook linkedin and twitter by searching ev news daily have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow